Back on Open Court, executives, and a uh, simple question for you guys as you're putting together a team and evaluating players, more important for you, talent or fit? Whew, combination. You know, I, obviously you want to have the talent, but you got to have the pieces fit. Um, you know, with us right now, you know, we got two big guys. And so sometimes you see another big guy, you're not going to add a third big guy or we could really change the way the game is played. But I think you have to do the combination. And, you know, I, I think it goes back to that puzzle, finding the pieces that fit. And sometimes, you know, getting that chemistry is, is, is the hardest thing, you know, finding that chemistry, finding that mesh. And, you know, that's what I think we're all in search of. How, how often do you look at players and say, that guy's a really good player. He's just not working here. He doesn't make sense for us. Well, I think you, you have that, you know, you're, you're dealing with that. But I think ultimately talent probably trumps most things just because the elite level talent, which you need to win, is a definable thing and harder to, harder to, to create and, and find. And, but, you know, at the end of the day, you can then put pieces around them to, to figure out how to make the fit work. And then you can coaches can coach creatively to find a way to put, you know, talented players together. Talent, talent, talent. Figure it out <laughs> you later. You know, there's a humanity to this, Daryl, that you're really missing. There's well, a, like an emotional... Talent is humanity. Last I checked, <laughs> they call them the talent. Like, that's the talent. Right? So. But, you know, certain guys amplify other players' talents, right? Right. I mean, yeah. and certain players diminish what other players do, or if there's duplicity. I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot of factors that, you know, if us, there are six of us, so if you weren't playing and it was us five on a team... You know, you know you have to have some shooting, but you can't just have five guys that want to shoot every time. I mean, somebody's got to rebound. Somebody's got to... So when you put a team together, yeah, talent for sure. But you also want to find guys that complement each other. When we, when we thought Iguodala would be a good fit and Sean Livingston, we thought big guard who can handle and pass because Curry's good off the ball. Okay, this is, that's not, it's not a genius to figure that out. But our league now... Why are fans so attuned to the first week of free agency in our sport? Because one player can swing it so far. Right. But the thing that's interesting about our sport is, when do you see, did Aaron Rodgers ever say, at the end of this deal, I'm, I'm leaving, or I want to go play in New York, or I want to go play in baseball? Do you ever hear about a guy going, well, I want out of here? Doesn't, in our sport, it's, cra- it's, it's a whole different thing. But I think now it's, be, it's become part of our jobs, it's become part of the fans' expectations of our sport. You guys cover it. I mean, free agency is sometimes more popular and the trade deadline and the draft than the games. Yeah. When you guys get interviewed after games, they don't, I, don't, I never get asked about the game. No. I get asked about who are you, who are you guys going to sign or do you, what do you think <laughs> you're going to trade. I'm like, we just played a game, like in the finals. <laughs> Let's talk about that. But I think the people want to know because, and I think going back to it, we talk about talent, one guy. You know, they, you know, Dirk Nowitzki, you know, you, know, you, got, you got Anthony Davis, I mean, Harden, Debron, Wade, all these guys that they had, you know, it's, it swings you, you know, in a complete different direction. And that's why, yes, talent, but when you get past that one of the top five, ten players in the league, then it does become the nuances of it as far as how do you build it. So, and so in our sport, where there's five players on the floor, offensively, defensively, the impact of that one player is more than any other sport with a possible exception in playoffs of a hockey goalie. That's the closest thing you have to the impact that you have one player can make in the NBA. And that's why all the attention is for all these other things. So does the equation change for the, the complementary player, the secondary player in terms of fit versus... You want your lead players to fit together, to complement each other, maybe a big and a wing. Or, but the reality is if you wait for the top players to all fit perfectly you're gonna be waiting a long time I, I remember the laughable articles when you guys added durant they're like oh maybe they're better without durant like oh. i can't think of any <laughs> yeah. of the 30 gms who thought that but yeah. those they were you saw them bob yeah. they were like yeah. real articles yeah. Yeah. saying oh maybe yeah. you know, and yeah. and so i mean you know you don't ever hear you, if you have a real interlocking team shooters hear this but you don't have these top 15 players everything fits together you play hard it's perfect you win 42 you get the 14th pick in the draft all right. I got the 14th pick. <laughs> yeah, I got the 14th pick three years in a row. It's like the worst pick to have, and we got three years in a row. I mean, it's not, it's not good. So. Well, the 15th so, would be worst. Donnie, how often have you found that it's gone the other way, where you, you brought in a guy who looks good on paper, who's a good player, but for whatever reason just doesn't fit either basketball-wise or culture-wise? 
Um, you know, all of us do our homework in uh, the draft, and so we pretty much know who who is risk relatively risk free and not. Um, I'm a talent guy. I mean, maybe it's uh, the genetics I was born under. You know, back a uh, hundred years before Bob got Bob got to Golden State, there was just some guy named Nelson that was coaching the Warriors, and I remember that guy. We had uh, what 17 guards, and then Manute Bull shoot oh, yeah. threes out there. That was awesome. <laughs> T- that was that those up Timmy Hardaway. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. five awesome. foot ten Timmy Hardaway, Hardaway, and Manute's out there casting up. Um, you know, it, it's, it, to me, it's, a, it's always a talent equation because we as management guys can move the pieces around and make trades and whatnot. Um, and I think once you get to that kind of elite level where you're uh, plenty of talented star-type potential, then you start looking for your specialists and whatnot. But, I mean, for us, we're, we're literally uh, going down the road now of really retooling in Dirk's, you know, uh, victory lap years. And for us, we're, we're definitely going after the star factor. You know, for years we had, you know, super teams, great teams, championship teams that were not built through free agency. So it was fine when we traded them and drafted them. But the fact that players chose in free agency a little bit and had a part of that is sort of one of the things that created a little bit of attention for, for obviously with, with KD and LeBron and, and Chris. But at the end of the day, the players chose to come together. They, they then had to work to make it, make it work. And that's where you get to you know, to ultimately win. So you need that talent to, wanna, to want to, to fit, to want to complement each other. And I think it's crazy when the great players choose a team in free agency, you have other teams burning jerseys and stuff. But when the, <laughs> but when the teams trade for a guy, they go like, oh, that's great. Yeah. Like, yeah. I mean, like the players should get, be able to pick where they want to play. I mean, that's, that's how I look at it. There's three ways to, to get to add players, draft, trade, free agency. Yeah. I'm not sure one is more moral than the other. One is the right <laughs> way versus the wrong way. They're all within the rules. I read the CBA. Right. It calls for free agency, calls for trades, calls for a draft. So, you know, at the end of the day, they're all good, and you just find whatever door it takes to, to get that elite-level talent. Yeah. I hear you're good on the CBA. He's really good. He's, He's the best. Yeah. 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 yeah, we all go to him. Yeah. <laughs> He's my cliff note. We pay him a yeah. retainer. Either go to Andy Ellisberg yeah. or Andy Tal. Yeah. It's one of the two. Yeah. You just you have to understand what? 2 plus 2 equals 5. As long as you understand that, everything That's how works. you guys do that. Uh, We'll take a break. Uh, Lots more coming here on Open Court Executive.